Great, now you're back at full health, of course. Not what I need. Summon gargoyle. Thank you very much. God damn it, come back here. Stop being such a dick wiener. This guy's so damn much. And he flies over there to go back into his bullshit form, which cannot affect whatsoever. Wonder fucking full. I gotta reload because oh my! Guess what? <gasps> that bow's out of spell charges. So, you've returned. Is your... I'm not doing this. I'm going to fight you in fucking vampire form. Then when you transport over there, I'm going to revert back. Of course. So that way I can get you out of your damn bubble. Disappoint me. Then we're going to fucking do the system all over again. You will die. You will fucking die. Tired of this conversation. You are gonna die here and now. Stop moving the ass. Stop moving the ass. Just get pinned in one spot. Now die. Of course, you just teleport. God damn it! I hate you, boss. I hate you, fucking boss. Die. Vampire Lord form set up again, so let's do this some more. The thing about this boss fight is eventually he won't be able to do that anymore. I think it takes like four times you gotta do that in order to keep him from being able to pop up that shield again. But, uh, it's still a goddamn pain in the ass, especially when you're not turn. Especially when the game gets totally fucking frozen and doesn't want to do the... Uh, yeah, I kinda know. I'd like to fucking transform. Thank you. The trick to this fight, in order to keep him from fully regenerating his health and all that fun stuff, you basically need to sit here, get him immediately out of his bubble when you get the chance. Like, right as soon as he gets into it, immediately get him out of there, that way his health will stay down a little bit, and he can pack away more at his health.
hurt for him. Come on. Let's do this. Fuck you, Gargoyle. I don't care about you. If you let him sit in that forever, he will eventually turn... He will eventually regain all of his health, and it's essentially starting the entire boss fight over again. I've actually seen people be able to kill this guy on his second phase, you know, right after he comes out of mist form, basically. And then I get a goddamn gargoyle on my ass again. I'll fuck you over later, gargoyle. I said later, gargoyle! Get the fuck out of my way! Great. In gang bang. Gargoyle, get out of my way, now. Here, have a friend to play with. You prick. Great. And his health back, of course. So I'm able to gain my health back. This is... Uh, a... One of the more annoying battles of attrition. You know, since if, if you can't kill him essentially right as soon as he gets out of his mist form and he gains all of his health back, basically each time he comes out of that phase... Whenever he comes out of that sphere thing, it's basically starting his life completely over. You gotta burn through this asshole's health bar, like, at least ten times in order to kill this guy, because of all the health that he's regenerating, all of that annoying shit, plus not to mention all the health that he gets back from when he goes into the ball of spherical goodness. Come on. If you let him complete the thing with his magic sphere, he will actually... If, I only let it happen once by complete annoying accident, and that was because my... That was because my fucking bow ran out of its enchantment charges, and it basically start the entire started the entire fight over again. Like total fucking bullshit started the fight completely over again. Had to get him through his sitting there summoning the not so, wonderful. No, summoning gargoyles, that asshole skeleton has a gargoyle of his own. Here, have fun with this thing. I'd like to focus on the boss assholes. Ba basically, it, he doesn't re-summon the gargoyles. Uh, when he wastes all those gargoyles, he'll never be able to summon them again, but once you get to this point in the fight, and he restarts, you have to go back through the previous two spheres that he's locked himself into. You have to go back through and attack him during those previous two fucking spheres. Get him out of him again. And I really gotta fucking tell you how annoying it is to completely start a boss fight all over again. Hey! Hey, guess what? Gargoyle! And it's already annoying enough that every minute or so he's pretty much completely getting his health all the way back. All because he's a goddamn vampire and therefore has life drain. And whenever he's in his life drain phase, he just 
flies around, doing nothing but life drain. He stays out of your way. He's a dick. And then he comes out of life train, and you can just wail away at his back. I'm pretty sure this is the case, but uh, if you can manage to hit an enemy in the back, even if it's not a sneak attack, it does do more damage. Um, you got no health, Brosif. Would you die? Thank you. Make sure to search his body, because you can get some decent stuff on him, off of him, especially this black soul gem. Potion of blood, vampire dust, a ring of destruction, regular ring, another health. Yeah. More importantly, you can get this. Because it's kind of awesome. <sighs> and that takes care of this annoying boss. The one boss in this entire game that I have to say has to have my vote for the most annoying boss to kill. As long as they'll let me, I think we can make oh, here. God. Make my family's legacy something more respectable. Of course, if you've got any more adventures planned. to have you along. That's what I wanted to hear. You can have her uh, stay here. She'll lead yeah. the vampire people. If you talk to her, you, you can have her. It sounds like. Uh, let's see. That's the last bit of the prophecy. The can you use the buff, the blood on these. Uh, do you have any arrows, though? They would have to be of elven quality, I guess. If you have elven arrows. You can have her transform them, transform them into sunburst arrows. I'd like to do, to, you to treat these in blood. And then, we get... It only works on elven arrows, though. Weapons... Here, here we go. Blood cursed arrows. Yeah. It, uh... It does stuff. There we go. Take that blood chalice. Anyways, this is the last, that was the last of the vampire missions to my knowledge. So, next recording set, I will start on doing the rest of the Dawn Guard missions. If you choose to join the vampires and you go to the Dawn Guard area, it stands to reason that they're just going to attack you. So you can't choose to become a vampire lord and still do the Dawn Guard missions. So keep that in mind. But more importantly, <sighs> Funny enough, there are two freaking blood chalices here. If you come here, you can drink from it, and you get Blessing of the Ancients. Then there's also the other blood chalice, wherever it is. I believe it's in this. Yep, there it is. Anyways, there are actually two of these. You got the blood... yeah, it's the Bloodstone Chalice. And there are two for some reason. Anyways, we'll go on and see y'all next time. I'm going to do a bit of off-screen grinding for this file because, hey, I need to get my, my, sneak is, my sneak stat is essentially almost there, so I need to get it there. Plus, I need to do some smithing as well. So, yeah, I'll see. Uh, y'all won't see this file for a little while anyways. Assuming that I don't choose the Dawn Guard path more than this, or over this one. Either way, 
we'll uh, see y'all next time when I start up my Dawn Guard run. Cheers, viewers.